There can be only one podcast, and may it be the Prince of the Universe. Hi, folks, I'm Matt. And I'm Wes. Hey. Hey. I got a question. I can't wait we, to hear it. We have spoken about a lot of topics. Yes. About the fall of popularity of certain things. Yes. Skating rinks, uh, malls, newspapers, radio, things that were popular in our day. Former okay. co-workers. <laughs> or co-workers. Baseball card shop, stuff like that. Is there something out of one of those that you wish was still popular today? Well, selfishly, it would be the comp book baseball card shop. Well, I think for me, it's hard to take that out of the mall because we were we were fortunate. We had two shops, one that was on another side of town that was much more quieter, mm -hmm. laid back. And then we had the mall location. So it's it's hard for me to say just that because the mall side of it added so much to our job. It did. It did. And and the thing is, the reason if we, if we were to if we were to, you know, Wayne would say, Hey, I don't care. Let's open one up just for the fun of it. You know, I got the money, let's do it. The mall would not be the place anymore. No, no, not it's at all. It's a sad, sad state of affairs. I had not been in a while. You had and was telling me about it. Yeah. I went and saw the reality that was worse than what I thought. There's one wing that's entirely empty just about. Well, the comedian that I think is so funny now that I'm taking with named Dusty Slay, he did a uh, – someone was asking about traveling. He was on David Spade's podcast, and they were talking about what do you do when you travel, and they are talking about going to the mall. And Dusty Slay said, I feel like I, when I go into the mall, it's the same people that were working there in the 90s because everyone seems so unenthusiastic and there's no energy. And I found right. that pretty funny and pretty spot on. It is. It's very spot on. Uh, and that is not a our town issue. And you know, and people always say, well, what about Dallas? What about Houston? But even in those areas, there's malls that are older that are are <clears throat> are gone away or are about to go away. So yeah, I think for me selfishly, I would love to say the shop. But I don't know what kind of Frankenstein that would look like. Okay, but I was the mall. Okay, yeah, because the mall, the fountains are are dried up now. You can tell it's on its last dying breath. It was warm in that mall. They've cut They're cutting down on, costs, cutting down on AC costs, cutting down on costs where they think they can. You know, at least we. I forgot that fountains. I guess were a pleasure to have, but. And now that they're dried up, it looks bad. It looks bad. They're dried out. Especially one one side besides the belk and that California nails, there is nothing. There is nothing. After GameStop, it is a ghost town. Well, you know, when we watch all these shows <clears throat> and like Last of Us where they go into the mall and they go into the arcade and stuff, that's kind of like going into a mall now in a small town. Like it is a it's a it's a sad, relic of the past. Yeah. It's but more I'm of a at, museum. But like I said, I think that if I, what I learned from doing this podcast with you in the past few years is it's not so much working there or even that. It was we had a collection of people that worked so well together that became friends lifelong after that. Yeah, that plays a bigger role in that. It you could put, you could have put us in a lot of different situations, and I think you would have got a similar result. <clears throat> right. We were just very fortunate to have as much product knowledge and, uh, you know, we had so, so many diverse ways of communicating that it became very fun and creative. Um. And it was it was the perfect storm because the mall was the it place to be. That was the hangout spot. It was Labor Day when we went. There was no one there. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you turn the clock back even 10, 10, 15 years ago, and there was too many people there, and I was pissed off because you couldn't find a seat in the in the, in the, uh, in food, the food court. court. It was I all would say packed. 10 years ago was when, at least in our town, you <clears> could still feel some... it. You could feel the change was really Waning. getting there. It was getting there. 
but uh, not quite. But you had you had crowds, you know, people just bustling, hustling. It was always these big. You're trying to weave around people, you know, trying to walk around with slow pokes. And now there's no one. Like that's exactly. Megan and I were just sitting there going, "Do you remember when we used to say bob and weave, and we split up and kind of bob and weave between all the zombies walking super slow, looking both ways, stopping in the middle of the area." And now there's nothing. There's room for everyone to go through there. No one would know. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, half the stores they are closed. Uh, there's an entire wing that should be just shut down completely. Yeah. It's just, and it's, you know, I kept going, wow, what a sad shape. Now, the Sabaro is still there. That thing's been there since the mall opened. It has its original design, the white with the little Well, the Chick-fil-A is still there, and the Chick-fil-A was there when it opened. So <clears throat> it's, that's got a re- one of, it's got a redesign. Yeah, it's been redone, but it's still there in, in somewhat yeah. of its original location. It's just and I really want to expanded. say Great American Cookie's always been there, but they've moved. You know, because they were in that little island in the middle, and then when that got destroyed, mm-hmm. that got taken yep. out for the merry-go-round that's not there anymore, they yeah. moved them over there. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, shoot, and even that merry-go-round was around for a little while. Yeah, but- well, they shut it down when they built the home, the tilt, the new tilt in there. Okay. So. But anyway, I mean, where would you put... A card and comic. You get you get your wish. A card and comic shop opens up. Where do you put it though? You got to put it in a quiet little place now. Wayne has a the comic book shop that we have here in our town is next to a, a what's called Antique Alley. It's a very popular little shopping strip with all little boutiques. Sure. And it started off with just antiques, and most of them still sell antiques. But now there's a lot of boutique shops that have opened up. A little dressing, someone that makes soaps, someone that makes. Uh, tobacco, I think they have tobacco. That. A tea lady, a lady that does tea. He uh, Futch loves the tea. He loves the tea lady. He loves the tea exchange. He Futch is a regular there. Yeah, of loves course. that nighttime blend. Well, I mean, and and they close about five, which is about close to bedtime. So he's you right. know seven thirty. You know, Look out! <laughs> woo, woo! Talking big. So it's just it's just the right time. They don't get too crazy. He has some tea. Um, I'm sure they have a candle maker, you know, all of these little it's the art art places and sure, stuff like that. Yeah. And then behind that is a few other left, you know, wannabe stores that aren't really traveling. And in there is tucked away between some random stuff is the comic you shop. know comic shop shop. And it's nice, but slow traffic, same customers, just make enough money to break even is what they really want. Not not really a money maker. Where would you put one though? There's not really a. I wouldn't put one on a busy street like Louisville, here in town, which is one of the main streets. For like, us, where would you put a? Con, uh, where would you put one? Yeah, if you if you got your wish and you got a, a store, where would you put it? Uh, I think I would put it in the mall. You would. You'd go back to the mall. You think I would. the mall would get the people back? Because I think that if you have something like that, if it's easily locatable. It will help it. Now, granted, the rent situation is where, but you have so many stores now in the mall that are so, like, why is this here? Like, how is this making money? Right. So there's got to be some break that we don't know about. But for our area where the mall is, and I think that is the best location for one. Um, So, yeah, actually, that's where I'd want it. And a current shop could... Could get by, even though comp books cards are kind of low. You'd have to be selling the magic, the Pokemon, the the card playing game. You'd have to or get a little even bit if the you ca- didn't do hobby. that, you would. I would think the best way to do that would be take someone, kind of what Wayne did. Wayne took us, and we all were good at something, <clears throat> lack of a right. better term. Like somebody was the comic guy, somebody was the sports guy, he was the coin guy. Yeah, like it. You would need that now. So I would say if you're going to expand into doing gaming, you would need someone with well, that. And remember, we, we sold the collectible, the CG, CCG stuff. We sold the Star Wars collectible card game. We sold the... And we, we, sold, we sold Magic and did we all sold that, magic but we just didn't that. play it. But I'm just saying that would probably be the bulk of the sales these That's days. That's what a lot of them do. Yeah. But I also do. think that if you're going to do that... You're going to lose some of what we enjoyed because you're, it can't just be the Star Wars cantina scene for your, for your customer base. Oh, no. And we were very, at our time, 
when we had cards and you had comics and we had new things and we had Silver Age and we had all yeah. of that stuff, we would have mom. All right, slight break there, but we're back. Go ahead. So we would, I would think, is the the biggest struggle would be how everything now is so splintered, like like everything is like a sub genre of a genre of a genre. Um, and we would have moms and daughters buying Beanie Babies and moms and sons looking at cards and like some weird guy looking at Vampirilla comics. And then you'd have somebody talking to Wayne about gold. So that environment, I don't know if how it would work now, but that to me is, I would want to recreate as close to that as I could. Now, granted, how financially viable is that? Hard to say. It doesn't matter. That's not the point, but that's what you would want. But I think that that's how you generate something like that is you get like-minded people that are willing to to be to see a bigger picture of it uh and i think that that's what it takes now is is that even doable i don't know but i mean yeah. to to well, me that was just you know anyway. yeah and i think like for wayne uh our our friend wayne who has his own comic shop here which i think is a very good comic shop compared yes. to i went to oh, quite absolutely. a few recently and uh, Wayne is very personable and you go into a lot of comic shops and it's very much the guy on the Simpsons, you know, yeah. th- or, uh, there used to be one in Nashville called the great escape that sold records and stuff has been there for decades. They kind of have a record store attitude. They're kind of snooty. So yeah. it's hard to say, or at least they were years ago, what that takes, because you had a lot of guys in their early twenties we were just bounding with energy because we were so passionate about what we were selling, but passionate also about hanging out with our buddies. That's a weird thing to find in a retail environment. True. So, like I said, that's why I like doing this podcast and having Brandon on and having him go through his uh, therapy with us was so fulfilling is because that was a day in our life um, Yeah. That was that was similar to that, except it, it, we got paid. Yeah, he's talking about the uh, podcast about three episodes ago, where uh, after it was over, we uh, actually told told each other that it sounded just that. That is what the conversation you heard was. I don't think a lot of our listeners will understand, but that is exactly what every day at the card shop was for us. Just us picking on one another, laughing, having a good time, you know, and just, you know, just enjoying the moment. Yeah. And that's what we did every day when we were together, having fun, laughing, working, cracking jokes, you know. It's like um, being in a dugout, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Next question. What style, clothes, hair, whatever, do you wish was would come back? Hmm. Because back in the day, not too long ago, a couple years back, Uh, I was directing a Christmas show, The Christmas Carol. Okay. And someone showed up on the set in a blue jean jacket. And I went, are you wearing a blue jean jacket? And he went, yeah. I went, is that that back in? Is that cool? He went, I think it's cool. I don't care about anyone else. I was like, right on. I went and bought a blue jean jacket and hung out with him in a blue jean jacket club. Now, he probably thought, well, for me, it's cool, Mr. Wilkins. For you, no. (laughs) But I was like... Yeah. I used well, I have to love a blue my, jean jacket. I used to love my blue jean jacket back in the day. I have another one now, but I bought it when he I said, oh, you got one. Um, I'd love to see that. You don't see blue jean jackets that much. I think it's uh, for what that I want to come back. I mean, I, I have a good friend of mine that I went and saw the Taylor Swift movie with uh, who uh, makes fun of the way I dress. So... I think that we all kind of cling to a different type of fashion statement. Uh, That could be good. It could be, uh, you know, dad core for you. And with me, it's, you know, middle-aged hanging on. But you know what, though? With the shirts like you wear right now, people wear Nirvana shirts all the time. I see kids with Nirvana shirts all the time. And I think that's kind of weird. But, I mean, I know we were probably Grateful Dead back in the, you know, that was the 70s. Whatever. Right. But I don't know. I just find that, wow, out of all of them, you pick Nirvana? I think that the it, 
there's an 80s, 90s gap where some people think 80s is just Cindy Lauper, uh, that look of the 80s, very bright Madonna, um, yeah. Go Go's. And then there's like this hard jump to uh, flannels and Doc Martens and things like that. The I grunge think, style, which I did enjoy. Yeah. So I think that there's part of that. Um, that is is the missing part for when people think of 80s and 90s. There's like from 85 to like 91, that I think, or maybe 87 to 91 that people don't think about maybe as much. That era of music? Yeah, it was that era of, of, of like, of music. So if you watched a lot of MTV, in, in MTV having like club MTV and different stuff like that and all the... You're right, because when people think 80s music, it's usually coming from 84, 85. Yeah, it's, I mean... And it, no other year in that day. I mean, you'd have a, grab a song here and there, but that little moment... Or they think 70s years, and they only think disco. I mean, that yeah, that was a huge part of the 70s, yeah. but, you know... They had so much more come out than yeah. just disco. I mean, John Ritter did not look like disco on Three's Company, and that's about as 70s you can get. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so uh, to say what I would like to come back, um, I think that we're fortunate in a time where everyone has kind of found a way to, everything has kind of been done fashion wise. Yeah. Everybody can kind of just do their own thing. Old and is new. Yeah. Yeah. Like every, we have lived long enough, sadly, where everything has kind of came back again, true. regardless of yeah, what that. Ring. Yeah, you know, what that looks like. And I mean, we, and we were living that in the 80s. We just didn't realize it. Those flashback to the 60s, the movies that would take you back to the 60s. Sure, yeah, yeah, those, yeah. That was people from that generation giving the callbacks to our mom and dads. Yeah. Like, hey, remember when you were kids? Remember the, it started off as kids that were young in the 60s, and now it's the 80s. They're adults now. I think if, there, if like there, there's anything about fashion that, uh, lack of a better term, that frustrates me is how some people just don't care. True. Like I feel like we've 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 become uh to wear pajamas around town and teen mom looking. Um where at least you know, put a little bit of care into your appearance or that. Yeah. Either way you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh you know, I make I, I tease our good friend Heath about many things, including go to bed early. <laughs> but I would always tease him about Owning when I bathroom. met yes. Heath, he always wore a denim shirt rolled up with a white shirt underneath it, khakis, and Doc Martens. That was the Heath Futch go-to. Yeah. It was kind if of like... If he had an action figure, that's how he'd look. He's, he reminds me, if you've ever watched Clerks and looked at Dante, that is how Heath <laughs> dressed for his the longest that I knew him. Except Just he didn't about. tuck his khakis into his docks and he wore brown ones. Right. But that was the Heath Futch look. It was. It was. That's true. Um, next question. You deal with younger generational people. Yep. What is something that you wish they would... Let me think. You know how kid, we when you get older, you say kids today. Right. You know, we had this, they don't. You, you're going to hear that for every generation from here on out. Yeah. From here on out, every generation is going to be the same. Always the older generation will look back. On the younger generation, go, oh, back in my day, they did that. We knew how to do this. Is there anything you're like, God, I wish they would get it into their head that, that, you know, why can't they think more like this or why can't it be more like this? Or I wish they just, is there anything you would have them change? I don't think so, it's their job to change. I think it's people my age drop the ball being parents. Oh, that, they, no, that's definitely the fact. So I think that me dealing with their 20 year old to 30 year old. Uh, offspring is not re it's it's hard for me to say what they should do because they don't they didn't know what they don't know no and I mean we're not gonna tell them what to do and whatnot I'm just saying that one of the things that bothers me I mean it just it is I've accepted it but I'm like geez the whole not responding back on something now my nephews oh, are like this yeah. I, the whole they, they call it go I guess ghosting ghosting yeah, yeah, yeah ghosting yeah. okay dude just say no. It's not going to hurt my feelings if you don't want to go do this or go do that. My nephew, when he wants to do something with me, 
he'll respond right away. If he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't respond. Well, I think that yeah. Just say no. It it's not I'm not going to be like, well, "Why not, bro?" I'm, no, I'm I'm going to be fine with that. I don't care either way. Just say no. Just give me some response. I think if anything to to uh old man on that top of that is I don't think there's much of a sense of loyalty in things like whoever no. brought you to the to the show, you kind of there's a sense of like loyalty and allegiance like and we'll we'll talk about the our shop with wayne ralph you uh brandon our other brandon like the regardless if he wants to be part of the family tree opie like there is like a kinship with us that i don't think most people can experience or even care to experience because we were put in such an interesting environment to be ourselves, but be, you know, a staff, a team, whatever, right. you know, Zig Ziglar term you want to put with that. But we were a team, and that's why we were so good at what we did. There was yeah. such a sense of, uh, like, we wanted to be good, but we also valued everything we were doing at the same time that's a good and i just it. don't know if that that that's you valued. can yeah there's, i don't know if you can convey that. that that's a good point and, and no you can't convey i'm just saying you just wish they would just kind of learn like i said i just i just wish they respond back with a no and it's fine don't be embarrassed don't be a well i don't want to say no to them what why not it doesn't hurt my feelings it, it may hurt some people's feelings. You don't want just say no. I'm not well, I think that, that that's a byproduct of hurting feelings. Is everyone is overly, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. We're yeah. just overly, like I have people that that can get frustrated because well, I was gonna, I was gonna do this, but they always are are first, and it's like, well, then take the initiative. You know, if you want something, <clears throat> act like you want it. Don't wait for something to play out to work if you want to do it. So I think that's enough. another thing is initiative. Right. Uh, like I can tell a story. I remember when, when I worked for, for Ralph, he called me one morning. Uh, the mall opened at 10. So he probably called me a little around nine and was like, Hey, can you get to the other shop today? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I was like, what happened? Well, uh, one of our coworkers had, fallen off the house because he was sweeping leaves off that morning and couldn't come to work. So I think that's more what I'm saying, like the availability of people, like they want to come and do this, but I didn't go to work because I was like, oh, I really need the money. It's like, no, I want to go because it's going to be a fun day. <laughs> I don't know if we have the ability to give people jobs that they enjoy anymore without screwing it up <laughs> with 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 the rules of everything we can't do versus just go make money and have a good time doing it. True. True. I see that. Yeah. All right. Next question. Something you miss being able to do. What do you miss being able to do? One of my things is I wish I had more people over. Uh, back in the day, you know, my apartment was basically just one thing party after the next just be, yeah just having people up not nothing wild and crazy just you know we do this we're always i remember i was always doing something now of course with kids you can't do that you got other responsibilities stuff gotta you gotta get stuff done gotta drop these people off gotta get these kids bathed gotta get this ready for the next day gotta do this and that i'm not cleaning up a little apartment anymore i'm cleaning up a two-story house you know i'm just you know it's a lot busier now but i do miss the days where we could just i could just have anyone over yeah anytime well, I, I'll I'll piggyback that and say what I don't. It's not what I don't miss, but I'm what I'm very grateful for is that um, I was I had very close friends that I'm still close to when I was in that part of where how are you going to want to grow up and stuff, and I had a really good friend and that embraced uh, wanted to kind of be a 14 year old kid his whole life. And I really was kind of drawn to not wanting to grow up. So I'm grateful that I do have that freedom still at my age of 47 right. to do all that. And 
you know, if there's one thing I wish I could do, yeah, it would be to see the people that I don't get to see anymore. But they've all, you know, they they just they have a lot of commitments, for lack of a better term. Yeah, at at the point of this podcast, I'm about to go on a trip. And uh, on that trip, I just realized today that one of my old friends may still live around there. So I, I sent him a text and asked, hey, where do you live? Because I'm, if I'm anywhere near you, I would love to stop by, say hello. Mm-hmm. And I also know that if I stopped by and said hello, first off, it had to be pretty quick because I have to be on my way. But secondly... That would probably be the last time we'd ever meet face to face because me going up there or them coming down here not g- likely going to happen. Long trip. But at least there, I would know we would. I, I would have the comfort of knowing this is the last. Not to say sadly or make it into something. It's not say, hey, this is the last time. So yeah, goodbye. Thanks for everything. We'll talk over the phone. You know, we'll still be friends. We're not going. to... Yeah. But this is the last time we'll meet face to face, and now I get to know it. Where last time, when it was oh. Over twenty five. So years you're ago. writing your last Die Hard right now. In a way, what you're in a way, yeah. yeah 20, 25 years ago, probably was the last time we saw each other. And the thing is, though, at that point, you never thought like that. I never, I'll never come face to face with this person again. Yeah. In social media, you can always see the person. You know, always video chat stuff like that. Yeah. But face to face, that's uh, and and getting to know that that's the moment. That'd be a lot of fun, you know, to say, "Hey, this is it. Good life to you." You know, we'll still keep in contact, but yeah, you know, glad this is our. You know, knowing this is the last time we'll probably see each other. Not that's bittersweet or make it like I'm not trying to make it into something big. It's just like that's kind of cool, if if it's the case. Um, but anyway, uh, one last question, bonus question for you. Uh, we've talked about this before. You do have some arcade games around mm-hmm. the house. What is one arcade game you wish you had that you could add to your collection? Hmm. There's a lot of good ones out there. Well, I think fortunately, uh, I my my Taylor Swift friend, I guess for lack of a better term. <laughs> I'm glad that you describe them as the Taylor Swift. Yeah, friend. yeah. He's That's my great. Swifty. He's my bro Swifty. My, my, my bro Swifty. There uh, you go. He's kind of like my uh, arcade guru, also. Nope. And he kind of sets everything up for me, and uh, you know he's like my Willy Wonka kind of thing. So I don't really have a need of all that, but I can tell you this: at my age, so basically he can mod an arcade to play any game. His nickname is the Mod Father. That is fantastic. So yeah, so uh, I can say that having uh, a couple of arcade games and a pinball machine and your tucked away in your room and having your comics in there as nerdy as that is it is uh it's kind of cool to just go in there and turn those things on and take in the ambiance of that because it is a forgotten relic uh and it's not it's it's you know whatever it is now with dave and busters and places like that but it is a cool thing to have so i can't say there's a game that I would like to have because I kind of have all that. And I'm also lucky enough where I can kind of squint my eyes and not do your brother's poor impressions of Cyclops and Wolverine looking for bad guys. But I can squint my eyes and I have all the nostalgia for that. So, okay. And I have my so buddies you- still. Like I think that's the biggest thing out of all this is this stay in contact with your buddies. You know, you're going to have to jump up and down on their roof sometimes to get them to come out. Maybe not sweep the leaves off and fall off. <laughs> but you got to stay in contact with people. You know, if you don't stay in contact with people, don't don't wonder what happened to them. Wonder where you went. Um, That's true. That's true. Did you have an arcade game you loved playing more than anything else? Back uh, in the day when arcades were giving taking your quarters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which one took the most quarters, I guess, from you, I should say. For me, it's no no, no doubt. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the first one. Yeah. I pumped quarters into that thing when I was a kid. I'd ask people to pay me in rolls of quarters. If they did not, I had my mom take me to the uh, bank where I would cash in my $10 for ten for rolls of quarters that I could take to Skate Town yeah. and pump, just d- deliver 20 bucks worth of game into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I remember my mom would make me skate once 
and then I could come back and play the game again. So I was well, see, like there. your story is so much like I don't have that necessarily. I can talk about like I, the game that Certain I always say. Love. Like there was a game called Akari Warriors that was like a Rambo takeoff movie mm-hmm. that had this weird joystick that like would rotate. I remember those little okay. ball joint. Things. Well, no, it wasn't a ball. It was like you could like turn it a certain way, and oh, the guy like would dial? fire a three sixty. Yeah, what? Like rotary. I don't That's know what wild. the word I'm looking for here is. Yeah. But anyway, I remember that game because that was a, a summer that my parents uh, had a got this like all inclusive membership to the YMCA in Monroe before it closed. And my mom and my sister would go, like, do aerobics in the morning, and I would go up there and mess around for an hour and a half or whatever. And then we'd, like, go to the mall every day. This is, like, 86 wow. Wow. kind of stuff. And I would go to the arcade, and I would, like, get a dollar or two every day. And I would go always go play Akari Warrior. So that would be the game that That'd I would say. I got you. No, that's fine. But, um, yeah, that would be the game. But, okay. the, but the whole arcade scene, I think, and I think Mikey – touched on this on Samofledge. Like, that's something that is... I don't know what's going on. We're, we're suffering technical difficulties here. It's the second time it's kind of cut out on us here. But anyway... We need to call the Mod Father. Is what we, we need to call to the do. Mod Father and get him to come over here and fix the stupid thing. But, but yeah. he is probably listening to Taylor Swift. He's also your Swifty fan. Yes. Wow. Yes, he's my I think you should have stuck with Mod Father instead of Bro Swifty. <laughs> but either way. All right, so there you go. Thanks for answering the questions. Yes. List of questions there. And uh, folks, if you have any answers to those questions, let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time on Princes of the Universe.